scripture from last week because tonight's teaching is a bunch of stuff that we we need to know but it's not well you'll, you'll see when we get into it and the ten horns that you saw they and the beast hate the harlot remember the harlot is riding on the beast. But they will hate her. They will make her cheerless. And they will strip her and eat her flesh and utterly consume her with fire. So as we go through tonight, just remember that's her end. And when you look at the world, they have an end. Okay? And so, we're starting in verse 18 of chapter 18. Okay, thank you. No, it's, we're still in 17. It's the last of 17. Oh. And the woman that you saw is herself the great city which dominates and controls the rulers and the leaders of the earth. Now tonight we want to find out who she is. Okay? I, I don't know if when you were reading through you thought anything about this. But remember, he had to be taken into the wilderness, in the spirit, to meet this woman. Okay? And in the next vision, we're going to see he had to be taken to the high mountain, in the spirit, to see the bride of Christ. So to see these two, you need to be in the spirit. In the first vision, we saw you, you have to be in the spirit to see the risen Christ. Okay? And you have to see these two by the spirit, or you can get them confused. Okay? I, I, I always have a hard time with some questions that people give. Because they're coming from an angle of not being able to see Jesus. So therefore, they might be coming from the angle that can see the harlot, but not know she's a harlot. Okay? So they come up with questions. But what about this? Okay? So tonight we're going to learn a little bit about what about this. And I'm going to maybe step on some denominational toes. Oh, So, into the wilderness. Remember, God sometimes takes us to the wilderness to spend some time with him. So don't get confused with this lady going to the wilderness, in the wilderness. This woman, the harlot, in the Bible is called Babylon. Okay? When, 
When we were introduced to Nimrod, remember one of the cities he started, and it's interesting, when you go back to the Genesis uh, passage, it talks about, first of all, he started four cities. What do you see of four? What does four tell us? The whole earth. The whole earth. Fullness of God in the earth. So this is throughout the whole earth. Okay? Now in the in the scripture it gives you the names, and one of the names was Babel. Which Babylon comes from. Okay? So she is a harlot. And we saw in that chart I drew up for you last week. New Jerusalem is what? Babylon is the harlot. The New Jerusalem is the church. The church or the bride of Christ. Okay. So they're both ladies attached to one in their kingdom. Okay. There's God's kingdom. There's Satan's kingdom. And this woman we saw was introduced by a name on her forehead. Okay? Babylon the Great was the name on her forehead. Okay? The mother of harlots. And we're going to see how that came to be. And for a short time tonight, we have to leave the scriptures and go into history to learn about this woman really, who she is. Back in Genesis 10, 11, talked about Nimrod. And he was the beginner of another kingdom. Okay? He was the one that set people free from God. Okay. He built Babel. They built the tower. Yeah. Okay. Not so that they could reach to God, but that they could be God. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I have and a question. When they, when they were building Babel, uh, I don't remember correctly, but were they supposed to build like an idol on top of the, on the, on the tower or something? Well, what the, what the intention was to build up to God, but it wasn't our God, okay? And that's why God had to come down, and the only way he could deal with them was to give them different languages. Up till that time, they spoke the same language, okay? So he confused. The word Babel means confusion. In the devil's kingdom is always confusion. I, I learned when I was a very young Christian, if you're confused, you can't make up your mind. It's from the devil. Okay. If it's from God, it'll be clear. Okay. My, my wife and I decided right when we were first saved, that any decision we were going to make, we would pray, and we had to have unity. Right. Not unity only here, but here. Yeah. And that has made the difference in our life. Totally. So the beginning of Babylon was the beginning of an empire the first government that was set up in the world, okay? And remember, the harlot is the one riding on the beast, riding on the governments of the world, okay? But the encouraging thing is that these things are all going to attack her in the end. So, Nimrod, had a wife. Her, 
Her name was I gotta look up my spelling. So you Mrs. <laughs> Her name was Simaramus. Okay? That was Nimrod's wife's name. Now she was a she was a harlot. A, a true heart in the day. But Nimrod married her. Remember, Nimrod was a mighty hunter before God. He, he hunted every kind of animal, but the main thing is he hunted man also. Not only animals. And when it says a mighty hunter before God, that doesn't mean he's a good man. Okay? He was a bad man. And then the Simaramas. She is becomes Nimrod's wife. And she had been a harlot. Okay? She was not a good lady. But she decided that her husband should be deified, to be made a god. And then, her husband died. Okay. But, at the time, she was pregnant, and she gave birth to a son, who she said was Nimrod, come back. Okay. So she became the mother of God. She had deified him so that he was God. So now he came back to life. Now she was the mother of God. Okay? So remember, Nimrod set the people free from God. God comes to set us free. Okay, see the similarities? That's why you have to be in the spirit to recognize. And then she figured if he was deified, she should be. So that people would worship her. Okay, now from this time on, you don't hear anything of the sun. You only hear of Simaramas. Because now she has put herself in the place of being the mother of God. And <laughs> she says that this son is the promised Messiah. Okay? Now, in her twisted mind, she convinces people that the son is actually Nimrod reborn. Okay? So, Nimrod being reborn is now the son, or the anointed one, the Messiah. And there's some de denominations, I can say, who worship the mother of Jesus more than Jesus. Okay? Anywhere she goes, she wants to be worshipped. In the Greek culture, she became Venus. Okay? We saw Paul coming against these things when he went to Ephesus. Okay, all these gods. But she, she also called her husband Zoroastra, which mm -hmm. means the seed of woman. Mm -hmm. Of course, she was a woman. Now, now, nobody in history knows who was the actual father of this son, but it didn't matter because he was unimportant now. So, Nimrod became the first man to be worshipped after his death. 
And we know from being downstairs that we worship Jesus after his death, so to speak. Right. You see the similarities? So she had sta statues made of her with a baby at her breast. Okay? And we see those statues today, even in some denominations. Okay? <laughs> you, got it. You, got it. you got it. You said that on tape. <laughs> you got it on tape. <laughs> uh, no, let me see where I am in my <laughs> notes there. So, throughout time, she has been called Divine Mother, the Great Goddess, nowadays, Mother Earth. Okay? Uh, Queen of Heaven, and many names in the Greek mythology. Okay, that they all came from her. Okay, you said that people call her Venus. Yeah. The goddess. Yeah. Wherever goddess worship is, that is her. Okay, she was the beginning so, of her. Can we say that the 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 religions of the world are influenced by that. Uh -huh. Because it's very interesting. Zoroastrian is a, is a religion back home in India. And in Kenya. Wow. Okay. Because there's a lot of Indians in Kenya. Yeah. Okay. So they are uh, worshipping not our God. That's who they're worshiping. They, they call him Zoroaster, yeah. but it was his wife that gave him that name. And in the Chaldean language, that is his name. Okay. So, all through the Bible, there are many whole chapters of the Bible talking about Babylon. It's giving us warnings about this lady, okay? And this lady gets so powerful that she's having influence even in some of our churches, okay? And I'll, I'll show you why. She is an idolatrous religion. She brings worshiping of idols. I, I was doing evangelism in Kenya one time and in this area. Every place I went, when I mentioned Jesus, people almost bowed down to me. And, but I noticed in their house, they had this picture. And I'd go to the next house, mention Jesus sent me, and they bow down. But I saw another picture. Finally, about the fourth house, I kept seeing the same picture. And my interpreter said, well, that's Jesus. So when you mention Jesus, they think they're talking about him. It was a Kenyan man who declared himself Jesus. And there's a whole group, you could call it a, a denomination, following this Jesus. The problem was 10 years ago he died. So they built up, I mean, this is a very big group in Kenya. Hundreds of thousands of people belong to it. And after he died, they built this mausoleum. And they put his body in there. And they all camped around there for three days, waiting for him to rise. Four days came, he didn't rise. Five days. Six days, another man stood up and said, that wasn't the real Jesus, I am. Oh. And people start bowing to him. Oh. You see, they were so caught up with this lady's influence that they believed the next guy. Wow. And this guy, nobody can look at him straight in the face. If he even is driving down the road, they bow down with their head on the ground. Oh. 
and they pour money into him. But idolatrous religion, riding on the back of the government. Church people that are connected with the beast, be careful. Now I'm not saying that people in the church shouldn't run for politics. I knew a man, he was one of the biggest thieves in Kenya. He stole billions of dollars from the government. Okay, Back when we first went to Kenya, you had to declare all your money. When we went into De Kenya, we had to declare how much money we had. And every month we had to send in receipts to show where we spent that money. Okay? If we brought more money into the country, we had to declare it. But then this fellow was a manipulator. And he got the government to change that. He started getting it so the government would give people money if they brought money into the country. Okay. So whenever after that, when we we were getting for a dollar, we were getting maybe fifteen shillings. After that, we would get thirty shillings because if we brought a dollar in, the government would give us a dollar. So he started. To, import export company but there was nothing there he was just declaring the things he was exporting and bringing in money but there was actually no money so he got billions from the government and finally he built hotels he built all these things and finally Somebody caught him. People like that, they, they say uh, a poor man can get life for nothing, but a rich man gets off. Yeah. So he's a very rich man now. So he's buying politicians, he's buying everyone. So then, while he's being charged and waiting for trial, goes and becomes a pastor. Mm -hmm. Ordains himself. Oh. <laughs> and people actually go to his church. Oh, man. Because this church is appealing to the things of the flesh. Yeah. This man is rich. We go to his church. We're going to get rich. Then, after a couple of years, he's still on charges and he runs to be president. And he tells everybody, God wants me to be president. <laughs> so, you know, if God says something, it's going to happen, right? He got no votes. So, you know, right there, he's a false person. Yeah. Okay. So, God hasn't spoken. But this is the kind of people that this lady appeals to. Okay. And the worst thing is, his church is still going today. So she corrupts nations. Body, soul, and spirit. With lust of the eyes. From 1 John 2.16 we see lust of the eyes, uh, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Any, if it feels good, do it. Have you ever heard anybody say that? We used to have billboards in Kenya advertising Coca-Cola products and different products. And there was this one for, I forget which soda it was. And it said, obey your lust. Drink this soda. Wow. 
how blatant is that? And it was right on billboards all across the country. So anything you desire, you can have it. All you have to do is want it. Okay. And there are some, I, I don't want to call them churches, some groups I've been to where they have this philosophy. If it feels good, do it. There, there was a time when, in our Bible college, we had an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I think I've told you about it a little bit. But for two weeks, we couldn't have classes. If, if we could gather a class together, they ended up on the floor. And, then, and just nothing, nothing was going on. We were just having meeting after meeting and praising God. It was powerful. Okay? But then there were people who tried to copy. They saw it, and they tried to copy it. I went, I went into one church one day, and uh, before I was to speak, I stood at the front and I said, praise God, everybody fell on the floor. People actually came up to me and looked to see if I had something in my hand. They felt in my pockets to see if I had something there. Because they wanted to have it for themselves. You understand? They didn't want God. They wanted that power. The magic. The magic, yeah. So, this is what she appeals to. Like the man that came and said, can I buy that power from you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, 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 like, as you guys know that I, I come from Mexico, right? And uh, it's supposed to be a Catholic country. But what ended up happening, there's so many kinds of virgins, right? Virgin Marys, there's like, I don't know, so many kinds. Mm -hmm. There's just one in particular that uh, that uh, it's like the story goes that she appeared to one of the native Indians in Mexico and she revealed herself as uh, the color Mary of Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. And uh, long story short, she became, they call her the ruler of Mexico. Mm -hmm. she, she like, she like uh, patrona, which means like she lords over the country, right? And uh, it's just incredible how people worship her and and uh, it's just unbelievable. And now that you're saying all these things, uh, probably this is where there's so much, there's a lot of witchcraft in Mexico, and all of the witchcraft involves the worshiping of these saints as well, right? And right. corruption. And, all and there's things. lots of money there, isn't there? Oh yeah, like the church and the government are all together. And it's yeah. just but you, you see, the, the thing is, when you're appealing to them, soon you're wanting what somebody else has. Right? Mm -hmm. And there comes a thing where I would rather steal what you have wow. than to work for it myself. And that's people in the church. Okay? Because I, yeah. I'm coveting. I want what you have instead of going to get it myself. Wow. There comes an idea that there's only so much to go around. Yeah. Okay? And if I have it, if you want it, you have to get it from me. Okay? That's what happens to this lady eventually. You see? Because, face it, pretty soon the bottom drops up. In Calgary, I can remember coming to Calgary, driving around the city, i never seen a for sale sign on a house. Mm. Now there's four on our street. Yeah. Why? The bottom's dropped up. Okay. The prices kept going up so high because people were paying it. Yeah. And now some friends of ours are thinking of selling their house and they can't get for what they paid for it. Mm. Oh. 
they can't afford to sell. You see? These things are everywhere. Lust of the eye brings in the greed, demanding money. I told you about one evangelist I saw one time who was demanding money. Without the money, he couldn't get up and preach. I was invited someplace to do a seminar in Kenya. And when I got there, the church was just <coughs> full. It was way, I mean, it was a hard place to get to. And at that time, I didn't have a four-wheel drive. I just had a car. And it was hard on that car getting there. And I walked in, and the place was packed, and the people were there ready. Not so much that it was me coming, but that anyone would come. Because they had invited many people, and everybody wanted money to come. I was the first one they asked that didn't ask for money. In fact, I left money there. <laughs> you understand? They, people are being corrupted by this woman's religion everywhere. So there's affluence. The priests are rich. In, in Kenya now, when we first went there, pastors were so blessed when we bought them bicycles. We had churches over here sending us money to buy bicycles for pastors. Now, if you offered a pastor a bicycle, he'd throw it back at you. He needs a problem. That's a Lexus here in Canada. They don't want that. A pastor I knew, he wanted, uh, for a while, they, they had steps. They went up to a motorbike. So he got a motorbike. And he, he was given a testimony one day in our Bible school. <laughs> Dangerous place to give a testimony. So he was testifying that he was going to preach in this church in a far distance. And there was a police block. So he got stopped. And uh, he had no license on his motorbike. He had no driver's license. Of course, he had no insurance. So the police were going to confiscate his bike and put him in jail. And another more prominent pastor came along and said, what are you doing? Don't you know this is a man of God? And he talked to the policeman so strongly, the policeman let him go. And he was praising God. So I got up and said, you better be. You were breaking the law. You yeah. deserve to be yeah. charged. Don't use your position yeah. Yeah. to get away with yeah. sin. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yes. But that's happening in the church. And they're gaining wealth. If, if you want to be something, be a church leader because you'll get lots of money. Because that's what they think. I, I think I, I missed that cue. Somehow I missed it. I didn't get the lots of money. That was a logical reason? Yeah. But I got everything I need. Okay. Gold, silver, temples filled with statues. Remind you of anything? Pictures of unbelievable wealth. Wherever this religion went, money was connected. 
lust of the eyes. We have to have that. We have to, we have to build a bigger church than everyone else. It has to be a mega church. Mega church. It has to be a cathedral. And we, we see that. I was traveling. I went to Holland one time for Christmas break. We had to, we had been in Kenya four years and we needed a break. So some friends of ours had been missionaries and moved to Holland and they said, come on up and they paid our way up. And we went there and drove around and he showed me church after church. Beautiful building. And he said, that one's not a church anymore. Because they were getting the wealth on it. And very soon God said, no more. Okay. So people who are attached to this are riding on that action. Okay. Kings, emperors, attach themselves to it. I think I told you in Kenya, politicians love to come into the church. Attached to the church. But they're no more Christian than anyone. No, but they attached to the church because they can get a lot of followers. Okay. I want, I must have it. And then the pride of life. I. I am above judgment. I, I was just a brand new missionary in Kenya. And when we went there, we were told we needed a certain amount of money to buy a car. When I got there, I, I took that much money. I found out I couldn't buy a car for that. So for a while, we were riding with this other missionary who actually charged us for every kilometer we went. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we were driving in her car one day, and we came up to the, one of these police roadblocks. And the guy came to her window, and she said, young man, don't you know who I am? She put it in gear and drove away. <laughs> Above judgment. I, I got stopped for speeding, apparently. I didn't know, because my speedometer had just broken. <laughs> so I was driving, and the policeman stopped me, and he said, you were speeding, and I said, okay. I guess I was. He said, well, you were doing 60 in a 50 zone. I said, okay, I confess. And he walked around my car, and he came back. He said, you know what speeding means. I said, yeah, give me a ticket and I'll sign it. Walked around. He did this for a half an hour. Because <laughs> what some people do, you know, your license in Kenya is a threefold thing. It folds over like this. And they put some money inside it. So the police even asked, where's the other page in your driver's license? I said, well, I didn't get one of those pages. <laughs> So finally, he said, what are you doing in Kenya? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm a missionary. He said, oh, get going. <laughs> he knew he wasn't going to get any <laughs> money. <laughs> but you understand? <laughs> it didn't matter with, whether I was speaking or not. It's whether I could give him something. Yeah. Did he still you? No, he didn't give me a ticket. I probably wasn't speeding, but my speedometer broke. I didn't know how fast I was going. So I just said, I'm guilty. <laughs> I will be a god unto myself. This woman's religion is like her husband. He, she deified him. Then she deified herself, becoming gods. You will be as gods. Remember the lie? that it said no lie is in their mouth, that was a lie, that you will be as God.
And this religion comes out of Babylon. It's riding on the government. Okay. And it's called a mystery. One of her names is, there's a mystery. Now you don't know until you get into it. Okay. I remember one time I, I joined the Alps Lodge. It's a secretive organization. I mean, they do a lot of good. They, they do great goods. But it's a secret society. And you don't know anything about it until you enter. Okay. They ha you have to go through this ritual. They, they do these chants over you. And, and you have to be blindfolded and go and kiss a goat and stuff like this. And, and other, other organizations are even worse. Okay. I even bought shares because we the, the lodge was getting small because lots of people were joining I only joined because it was a good place to drink you know, cheap <laughs> liquor <laughs> and, but the place grew so we built a new one so to raise money we bought shares there so I, I bought 10 shares of $100 I was single enough. After I left there, I threw the shares away. I didn't want to gain money back from it. But there's places like the Masonic Lodge that are even more secretive. You get in, and then as you increase in it, you learn more. But the more you learn, the less you can get out. They, they won't let you leave after a while. Uh, shortly after I got saved, I was working for a company that had 90 electricians. And I was the only the second one that had an actual license to be an electrician. All the rest were trained on the job. Most of them were hockey players. And they just gave them an easy job to do while they played hockey. But the one, the one man that was ahead of me was in the Masonic Lodge. And we got along all right until I got saved. Mm -hmm. And he fought against me. Pretty soon he was made boss for a week while I boss was on holidays and he fired me. Now it was against all the rules for a temporary boss to fire him. But he fired me. Okay. Because he was in the Masonic Lodge and so were some of the other people in the company in high position. So I was fired. I was a union member. And the union couldn't even help me against this guy. I found out later some of the union leaders were in the Masonic Lodge. Okay. It took a while. I, I finally got back on. But he made sure I was put on a job where I made less money. Uh, I was put on this job where I was making $2 less than what I was making before. But it was a job where I had to work 11 hours a day. So in the long run, I made more money than any other electrician. Plus, because I was working three hours a day, after two hours, they have to give you a meal. Mm -hmm. But I started at 5 o'clock in the morning. So I was going home before the meals were given. So they gave me a meal ticket every day. And this meal ticket was good in any restaurant in Cranbrook or Kimberley. So five days, <coughs> my whole family out for the 
best restaurant, best meals. So although he thought he was punishing me, I was, I was getting, plus I was brand newly saved, and this job, only of the 11 hours, I was only busy for about six. So five hours, I could do whatever I wanted. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I, I read the Bible over and over on the job. People saw me and they said, what's that book? And then they were scared to come around me until they had a need. And then they would come. And they knew nobody would see them because nobody else would come around. So she is a mystery. If you get into her religion, you don't know it at first. You don't know that you're connected with her until you get in so deep that by then you have a hard time getting out. I was a union leader. I had uh, worked my way up in the union and they used to use me to go to a place that was having problems with the leader. And I'd start, uh, no, I wasn't meeting, and I'd get him on straight. And then I'd mediate. But I was going all over BC, causing minds to go on strike, because I had that much power. But you, you see, I wasn't saved. And I love that power, to be able. One mine manager came to me one day to ask me a question. He said, I'm not running this place, you are. Because he saw the power that was in this woman. Okay, And that's who I was following. I was following her, and I didn't know. Okay. So you can be there following her and not even know it. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to reveal her to you. So at the heart of it all, she wants to be worshipped. And people who get in there want to be worshipped. Okay. And if you worship the true God, you would die. Remember the blood of the martyrs underneath the altar crying out? Guess who put them there? <laughs> this religion, this lady. Wherever she goes, whatever name she is operating under, she destroys. <clears throat> if you refuse to go her way, it was hard for me to get out of the union after I knew their secrets and how they worked. They didn't want me to leave. They offered me bundles of money to stay. Because they didn't want me to go. I had to actually quit the job I was working on and leave. Okay. If you confess the true God, then you're really in trouble. I wasn't even confessing God. I just wanted, I knew something was wrong and I wanted to get out of there. So Babylon even corrupted Israel. Okay? That's why in Isaiah 13, 14, 21, 46 to 48, Jeremiah 25, 50, 51, Daniel 4, all of these are talking about Babylon and the destruction of Babylon. Okay? So we've heard about the destruction of Babylon. So we know that she's not going to succeed. Even today, she's not going to succeed. Okay. But she's there. In the scripture, she's put alongside the devil and the bow. Because she's writing on the beast, remember.
Are you, are you getting the idea here? It doesn't really matter the names that are involved, but you can see it around you. Yeah. Okay? You can see these things around us. When I keep mentioning the world coming into the church, that's what it is. And I watch TV shows, and in TV shows, um, uh, every once in a while they say, we're praying for you, that the universe will bless you. Yeah. Guess what that is? What Hollywood does is use gradualism. You know, if you want to boil a frog, you don't put him in boiling water, because he'll jump out. You put them in cold water and then warm it up. That's how Hollywood did it. Right. They started out, the, the family was sacred. I don't know if any uh, remember, leave it to beaver, everything was good. The father and the mother and the family, they all sat down to meals together, things were good. But pretty soon they're not. Now, there's single parent families on TV. Now more than more, there are ladies who are the head of the home. Not that I'm, I'm against ladies. Don't get that. I, I think there's some very good, powerful ladies. But that's not God's plan. So she's coming in through the media. and changing our way of thinking. Yeah. I totally believe it's because of Hollywood that even in the church, gays and lesbians are accepted. Yeah. In the Bible, they're not. Mm. Okay. We are allowing things to come in. And it's because of their lives. Before we had TV had more family time and each generation's got it's got worse and when we were we got our first tv mom and dad would not let us watch it during meal the tv was off yeah we only got an hour of tv that was it i i think my youngest son he was very little when we got saved but we were watching tv and a commercial came on and he was touched when we first got saved. He was touched in church. because I used to tell him, listen, God might speak to you. And God started speaking to him. But we were watching, and a commercial came on with Santa Claus. He said, Dad, we don't believe in Santa Claus. Why are we watching this? And he went over and out, uh, uh, shut it off. Yes. Amen, amen, we threw amen. the TV off. Yeah. We never had a TV for many years. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. It's true. And we spent more time as a together. family. We had every meal together, except the morning, because I had to be at work at 5 in the morning. But we spent every supper together. We gave questions for our children to have to answer before they could leave the table and go play. And they enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. If I asked too easy a question, Dad, give us a harder one. Because oh, yeah. we've read through the Bible as a family together, prayed together. Families aren't doing that today. Then too many got electronic devices. Yeah. <laughs> Distractions. Well, um, just a quick comment. I was surprised, like, this year and even last year, the amount of movies that just came out, like The Non, and all these kind of movies, all these demonic possessions yeah. and demons, and, and, and the vampires are the good guys, and there's TV series with the vampires and drinking blood, they are the good guys. Yeah. And it's just, like, unbelievable. You know, so, um, now the, the superhero is not the good guy, the, the evil guys. Now... They're like, they're making them look like the good guys. That's right. And like, oh my lord, it's just like, you want to go watch a movie, and it's like, I'm praying like, Lord, I don't even want to go to the movies. Like, 
unless it's a very good movie, right? That's like the Lord let me to watch for his car. The the thing is that you can grow to a point in maturity where you recognize mm -hmm. these things mm -hmm. that that's evil. See when by the spirit you can recognize the harlot mm -hmm. when she's speaking. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I like to go to a movie just to see what people are watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, because you have to know where they're at. Yeah. Right. And how to reach them. And how to reach them. Mm -hmm. I can't say about the media. Um, you know, I think we as Christians can rise up. You know, I, I sit here quite often as I'm watching the news. I start praying in the spirit and I start buying demonic powers that are influenced the media. I, I do that. I do that almost every day. And even now, like with the election coming on, and just, I yeah. feel like, uh, you know, we can take authority as Christians. We can confuse the enemy. Yeah. That's so right. That yeah. The media is not distorting things like they are. I just feel like we need to rise up and even against government things. That's right. You know, like we, we come against it. We're being complacent. We become. We come against the works and plans of the enemy. You know, That's right. I think the church hasn't been. No. We, we've been quite complacent. Yeah. We have. Yeah. We have. And the, the thing is, the, the problem is we're not united. That's right. Okay. We sometimes get to think our denomination has the truth and you, you're wrong. Yeah. Rather, unite. Mm -hmm. If you're connected to Christ, we're connected this way. And if we could connect like that, yeah. we could stand against every one of these. Yeah. There's enough Christians to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Look at Elijah. Yeah. Stood against 450. There are, there, are, there are more Christians bashing Christians nowadays yeah. or That's not right. saying what they think should have said. Yeah. And I, I'm really disappointed. I'm like, okay, this is, you are actually, <coughs> going on YouTube and claiming you're a Christian, but you're bashing out the Christian. That's or, right. Like, there's no love, there's nothing there. You're just That's like, right. okay, he or she is like, not a Bible follower or a Christian. It's so I stupid. I think we can take a break here. Quarter after eight, I see.